In the last video, we showcased how computers interpret integers on multiple scales. However, what if we want to increase the complexity beyond integers? What if we want to add a decimal point that can float around to represent different fractions and mathematical constants? As we will see how computers understand floating point numbers and how they contributed in my opinion to the greatest line of code ever written. To keep things simple, we will take single precision floating points. The sine width determines if the number is positive or negative, the exponent determines how many places to move the decimal point, and the mantissa is the actual significant digit. To represent 12.375 in binary, we first take the integer part 12 and convert it separately. We then convert the fractional part by multiplying it by 2 repeatedly. And after combining both, the second step is to normalize to get the scientific notation, as we are working with the IEEE standard for floating point arithmetic. Now normalization requires moving the decimal point, so there is exactly one non-zero digit before it. In our case, we move the decimal point 3 places to the left, and thus we multiply it by 2 power 3. And for the assembly, we know the number is positive, so the sign bit is 0, and our exponent is 3, but we need a bias to represent both positive and negative exponents. The standard bias for 32-bit floats is 127, and thus our biased exponent becomes 130, and we convert it to binary. Lastly, for the mantissa, we take the digits after the decimal part, and because our number is only 6 bits, we pad the rest with zeros to reach 23 bits. And that is it. This is how the computer stores floating point numbers in memory. However, a good design requires a good compromise. When you hear computers make mistakes or present inaccurate results, it is confusing. Because how can there be a mistake when they use the simplest logic possible? But unfortunately, there is. For example, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 does not equal 0 0.3. Run this in any programming language, and you will always get this result. The reason is that 0.1 cannot be represented in binary. If we try to convert it, we start with 0.2, then 0.4 and so on, until we end up with 0.4 again, and it will repeat the same pattern recursively until infinity. The solution is we round up, creating a tiny mistake and an inaccurate result. And that is why we hear that we still lack the hardware and space and rockets self-destructing or malfunctioning. But here's the amazing part. Sometimes programmers can take these weird internal rules and quirks of floating point numbers and exploit them to create something brilliant. And that brings me to what is, in my opinion, one of the greatest lines of code ever written. The fast inverse square root is a function from the game Quake 3 Arena that computes the inverse of the square root responsible for vector normalization for 3D graphics and in-game physics. The problem began with the standard square root function being slow, and given that division in programming is also slow, combining both will certainly result in a poor performance. This prompted the developers to create this function from scratch. From the original source code, and yes, the comments are real, the function takes and returns a floating point number. We first declare one long integer and two floats. After that, we store half of the input, which is used for later refinement. Then we copy the original input to the variable y. And here's where the magic happens. We reinterpret a float number y as an integer, without conversion as we are about to do integer arithmetic on the IEEE floats as they are still of the same value, but interpreted differently. That will lead us to the what the f comment. We know that a square root is essentially a number half-powered, and by right shifting the integer by 1, we essentially divided it by 2 in binary. It is then subtracted from the magic constant as it handles the mantissa and corrects the approximation. We finally convert the bits back to floats, and at this point, y is not very accurate. There is one more step. 
we will use the above variables for the Newton Raphson refinement. And just like that, a single iteration bumps accuracy from 95 to 99.9%. These 10 elegant lines of code revolutionized gaming performance, making thousands of calculations run smoothly and optimizing performance for a better gaming experience, as the legacy of Quake speaks for itself. A single decimal point floating around might seem trivial, but it had an immense impact on 3D graphics and video game development, as the gaming industry is now worth more than $300 billion and it is not stopping anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching, until next time.